What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Hit the lights for my real hip hop heads only. We all know that it is pride that comes before the fall. But in upstate New York, that Rome's an MC that's been snatching pride like receipt paper. Jamal Gasol enters the arena from Cataract City, or as most of you may refer to it, Niagara Falls, the New York side. He arrives on this platform after an exceptional run of street hop records that delve into his relationship to the underworld without sacrificing the lyrical skill necessary to garner the respect of those who call this platform their home. That means you. While the roots of his ever-growing tree were planted in the streets, the man on the left side of your screen actually respects the craft of MCing. If this were not so, I suspect that you'd be hearing this gentleman's voice slathered in auto-tune and furthermore, he would not have been afforded the request to speak with the intro king right here at the real home of hip hop and you're welcome. His reputation precedes him as evidenced by his collaborations with some of the most prominent figures to emerge in the sport for some time. These alliances include but are not limited to work with Shay Noor, Biddy the Butcher, 38 Special, Nicholas Craven, Planet Asia, Ito, Dirty Diggs, Rome Streets, Deuce Ellis, The Illustrious Sky Zoo, Street Justice, Lord Juco, and Dirty Diggs. For what he's done and continues to do for hip hop, We've reserved him a table in the VIP as it gives me great pleasure to present to you for the first time and live as fuck on the Mike Power Show, the flyest in the falls, a.k.a. Blockwork Mall, a.k.a. Mr. 31. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Jamal Gasol is in the building. <laughs> Jamal. What's good? What's good? What's finally, good? finally, you made it. The gym with that one, I came out like Rocky. Yo, <laughs> yo, that's what's up. Let me do this. I gotta do this promo real quick. Uh, real quick. This episode is sponsored by Front Row Regale. That's right, Front Row Regale, the label headed by Ito, the legendary Rochester, New York MC producer. Front Row Regale offers an incredible array of MCs and styles to not only complement the current lyrical resurgence, but also expand its reach, influence, and power. Built for the streets, providing music for the soul. The reinforcements are on the way, and they are Front Row Regale. Shout the Front Row Regale. Uh, also sponsored by Chaotica Eyeball. We're going to get this attached later. But shout to Chaotica Eyeball, Jamal. Great to have you in the building, sir. Um, you're sure. from Niagara Falls, New York. Yes, Is, am I right? Yes, All sir. right. Okay. So I think when a lot of people hear Niagara Falls, they think Canada. What's the New York side of the falls like? Well, you know, the New York side of Niagara Falls, I would say, is a little more grittier. You know, like Canada's Niagara Falls is more tourist. Like we got the tourist side too, but we only got like maybe three or four block worth of tourism, you know what I'm saying? But Niagara Falls is definitely a different tale, small population. You know what I mean? We under like 50,000 people out there, you know what I mean? So it definitely goes down. 48,000 and some change to be exact, right? Yeah, 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 just around them numbers. Yeah, um, where should I not go if I visit the falls? <laughs> I would tell you, not to go to the Red House. Don't go to Max's. Um, be careful going over the players. And uh, don't be on 19th at nighttime looking for, um, asking no questions. No, no ask for no help on 19th after 11 o'clock at night. All right. I'm writing these down just in case I get up that way. You said 19th. <laughs> Yeah, the I nine. Everybody know what it. Is. Yeah, don't don't go over there after nighttime asking no questions. No, <laughs> he said don't ask nothing. <laughs> You've been making some noise lately with the release of the album, uh, the novelty of standards. Um, where's that name come from? Well, it was just like um, I just wanted to make like a dope synonym for like the change of persona, like just the elevation of growth. So, you know, I mean, I just looked up different words that like would be like good similes for that, um, change in persona and novelty of standard just had such a high rank and feel like to it. It's not like this is like some classic elegance right here. You know what I'm saying? So and the we artwork had to make it. The artwork complements that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. the Niagara County logo. I just had it remade. Beautiful art. Who did the artwork again? Uh, my boy Zach Sistak. Cataract City, the song. That's my joint. 
time to even the score The world thought I raw shit, so I'm coming with more Had to block hotter than Ecuador It's all capping your metaphors Every one of my rhymes better than before They pay the boys up north through gay short Playing spades left wakes till they see the parole board It's a dollar made every time my voice records A closed mind can't open doors You bridging the gap on that song um, is that a, is that song a love letter to Niagara Falls? Yeah, that that you know that's a nice way to say that because that is what it was like an OD to the town. You know what I mean? Just because you know it's like a love hate relationship. You see, I had to go like on both sides of the story, like you know, walking up the more caskets and all to how to live a little to feel a difference. You know what I'm saying? So you get it out the fridge, baby. Yeah, I'm on daddy duty too. So that's what's what up, I mean? though. Really that's what's up. Asking. Yeah. Um, is there if, ever any temptation to relocate to New York City to be closer to the action or is is the move to stay upstate because that's where all the energy is right now? Richard Cut. That's my, you know, my thing is I'll be talking all the time about moving to New Jersey with it being closer and everything. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I wouldn't mind living in New Jersey because it's like New York City is more, more beneficial for my craft. Especially with around here, it's not too much musically, like opportunity wise. A lot of things don't really go too far as far as in the music scene. So, New York City, the mecca of hip hop, is like is necessary for me to be more down there and meet more of my air likes. You know what I'm saying? So, but the but the collaborations, right? It's a lot of crazy spitters up and coming in uh, in, in the upstate area. You talk about you know Syracuse, the Falls, uh, Buffalo, Rochester, all that. That's where everybody is at right now. So, but you still thinking about moving maybe Jersey? Yeah, even even though everybody's coming from up here, we don't really got too much to to do around here. We we coming down there for shows. We coming down there to do events. What's the name of the dude? The thing that that you had with Thirty Eight Special. Um, but high rise, great fucking song, right? High rise, a great song. Um, do you think that Spess showed up to that video shoot trying to outflex you on the beard game? Because he was mad grizzly. Know. He just grew a beard out of nowhere. I don't know where Spess grew this beard. I think the pandemic did something to him because <laughs> he just grew a beard out of nowhere, son. So I don't know. It was different. I never seen him with the beard. He always had the low trim since I, since he first came on the scene. So. Yeah, that thing was mad. So I'm like, did he do this just because Jamal got a famous beard in the sport? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he don't want, he especially don't want to give nobody no Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Have no bigger beard than me. <laughs> uh, and you, you're off the top freestyle, you spit. I don't want to be where niggas ordering whole shit bang chips. Your favorite rapper never seen bricks or bill of piff. These niggas talking about the streets is a myth. I'm going to show you what can happen when you play with that shit. I don't want to be where niggas ordering whole shebang chips. What you know about shebangs? Sure, that's, you know, that's lock-up food right there. That's some, that's some jail vending machines. You ain't gonna see that whole shit. Now, you might see whole shebang out here now more, but back then you wasn't seeing whole shebang chips unless you was in jail, you know what I'm saying? So Right, so people that don't know that that's watching, that have lived still upstanding life and haven't made no mistakes or got caught up or railroaded, uh, the whole shebang is probably the best potato chip in the world. That's just what I say. Like, you gotta, you gotta end up- I disagree. Yeah, you, you end up having to go to the joint to eat this chip. And it's like, people really fight for these chips in the joint. Like, it's, cause there's no flavor in the food in the joint and the shebang's got mad flavor. And then you got cats stockpiling like, you know, because some, some joints you can only get, like, seven for the whole week. Other joints might let you get more. You stockpile and put them in your laundry bag, and you sell them joints to other people at a higher price. Mm -hmm. And you, <laughs> if that's something, <laughs> I might be saying too much right now. I was say, you're giving the game out right now. I ain't going to lie. I'm listening to you like, mm -hmm. yeah, he did it. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. So, and then they got your bags on the street now. I went to the gas station. I said, oh, my God. You know, I got like four, four bags downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, my I girl got, said, my girl said, what you doing? You home? <laughs> I had got a bag a couple weeks ago, just, just like, yo, let me get one. I haven't even a minute. But I was getting them when they first started coming out. They was in the corner store like 2020. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. This is different. <laughs> if you take like you take like three months off of shebangs and then you just go back and get something, it's like boom, flavor explosion in your mouth. Pause. You did the song uh It Ain't Safe with Benny, first of all. You said you used to work at a Denny's in that song. Uh, when was that? Um, uh, you know, it was crazy. When I wrote that song, I was I was 
working at Denny's on my way out of Denny's though. Like I was like, man, I'm about to get ready to quit this shit. Like, but I was um, working at Denny's back in like 2017, 2018. Yeah. I wash dishes. I used to be the dishwasher on the weekends and then I start working weekdays. Cause um, I was on drug court. So a part of my program, you had to like have a job and stuff. So I just got like the quickest thing I could do, but I ended up finding another job where I was like, yeah, get me up out of here. I used to hate working at that. Well, respect the grind, bro, because a lot of times when you get put on that diversionary stuff and you get put on a probation, they they got these um, requirements for you. A lot of our brothers and sometimes our sisters, they, they just go off and they're going to continue doing the fuck shit. You know what I mean? But right. apparently you had a mentality that you weren't about to let them get you caught back up. You did what you had to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But Denny's got some dope Absolutely. ass food though. I mean, the nationwide they're a little bit racist, but I love the food at Denny's. You fat fuck. I still get my cheesecake omelet. I mean, the cheesesteak omelet. I still order that every now and then. Word. The and when you, you at that same Denny's? Yeah, I go there. And they know they know what it is now though. It, it's not the same yeah. Jamal Gasol. <laughs> oh no, nah, it's a little yeah, definitely a little different now. You know, <laughs> yeah, you take this in the back. <laughs> right this hey, way, no, Mr. Gasol. Me. <laughs> what was the worst part about working there? I think the worst part about working there was just um I felt it was it was a mental thing for me. It was just a mental thing for me where it was like, okay, I'm at work. I'm uh, it's sort of like helping my priorities get ahead, but the fact that I felt that I could be better than that. I was better than a dishwasher. You know what I'm saying? Like the position I had at the moment, I wasn't happy with. I had to settle for basically what I could find at that moment. But that just was my motivation to want to do better. It's like, see, you want to keep coming here, you got to find a solution. So you don't got to come here no more. Bruh, a job at Denny's, and two, it's different, a little bit different now. You get a job easier now because ain't nobody trying to work, right? But back then, even trying to go apply at Denny's with a guy with a record, you don't know if you're going to get that job. Right, right. So I, I mean, appreciate what I could get. I definitely understand that. You know what I mean? So I just had to appreciate what I can get. That was the only spot that hired me. I applied to like six, seven other places at the time, going on Indeed, going through temp agencies, a deco and all that. And even with the Medeco jobs, you know, them trying to be short term sometimes. You might only be there for two months, then they send you to some other location. Like they gave me a job one time. I worked for a week and then they just told me don't come back. I'm like, okay, so now what? Like, we'll let you, you know when you, we find more work. You end up going, you, you get fatigued. From the job search, because you fuck around and, you know, you apply for like 80 fucking joints. You know what I mean? You might go actually physically in person at like 15. Or By the time you get to the 15th, 20th one, you're like, man. Yeah, that's but that's why, that's the way this, this country is fucking set up. They they want us to go out and do that shit that's going to make it easy for them to put us in the bing. You know what I mean? And that's why, that, that's why we the greatest that's ever lived, if we live up to our potential, right? Because we not giving up. We fight in this struggle that's supposed to have been taken care of a long time ago. People is now showing their true, I'm on a rant right now. They showing their true colors. They let you know we don't give a fuck about you niggas. You know what I mean? So so guys that's trying to go get it legally, salute to y'all, hats off to y'all. Don't be discouraged because you see somebody else with a big ass chain, a big ass fucking rims, because the whole shit is a trap. You know what I mean? No pun intended. Right. It is a fucking uh, uh, trap. That's, what they that's a valuable feature from Benny that you had on there, uh, considering his price just went way the fuck up. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That signing to a major label situation is that something you uh, aspire to, or do you, do you prefer to keep the grind independent? Well, I mean, if, uh, I think it just all has to play out right. Like the independent grind leads to the label, so you know, like I knew Benny for years, so watching him come up is just like all motivation and inspiration. Like every time I see him, he always give me a jewel or let me know he watching and doing it. You know, what I mean, see here people talking about me, but he always tell me something that like. Make me think like, okay, yeah, I should be more observant of this or watch out for this or, you know, definitely be on point for this. Like, you know what I mean? But And the longevity. Like, the longevity of his grind is inspirational. He's like got 20 fucking years doing this thing. Right, right. He been, I'm telling you, he's been around for years. I remember when he had the braids, when it was 2 chain Benny. I remember all that. You talk a bit about the dope game in your lyrics, but it frequently comes with a warning. Do you think the fans are hearing those warnings or just hearing what they want to hear? Um, I gotta say a mix of both because I got people that really hit me up and I had messages where people say, yo, you really changed my life. Like, yo, you made me think about this or yo, I was listening to this and it made me think about not doing that. And it's like, yo, I want to thank you. Like I had people do that before. So I definitely feel like people are listening, but then you do got the people that's like listening, but they hear the part that stands out to them more. You know, they might hear some numbers or some certain substances and it just 
make them like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And they want to show off. Like, y'all have people try to have conversations with me. We, we ain't supposed to be having, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> bruh, come on, man. And then you don't know that part. I don't know what that was, but th they might be the feds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I'm about to say, yeah, we ain't, uh, I ain't, I, my guard ain't always down. Trust me. Right. Um, Angela Flowers is dope as fuck. That song. Um, I see you work with Jay Levison on that. Um, mm -hmm. Did you know that he gave you the same beat from Ferrari Drip off of Fly Art from Rush and Jay Nice? You know, it's crazy. I didn't know until after. I didn't know until after. But I held that. I had that song for like uh, over a year. I had it in the cut. Hey, yo, picture me two stepping with the plug, baby sister in the juke joint. Balenciaga kicks without the laces. I let her roll my joints, raw cones with the filters. Peeking through the pillars, upstate New York, known for breeding real niggas. Grew up with killers and drug dealers. Hustle all summer when the winter come, fox fur and chinchillas. Cutting coke with the Roxies. I'm difficult to duplicate and copy. That's where the mommy. Cause he produced um Kansas City Smackman for me, hmm. and he was just sending me more beats at the time. And I, I still had another um song that was gonna go on my previous album from him. I didn't use the beat, but I didn't know until after. I think I seen Jay Knight post it. I'm in a Fendi mix scarf. Steak on Versace place by the same dog. Diamonds on the chain with the Cuban links on. Louis Trez a couple thousand with the drinks cost. Uh, I'm two stepping in the black Giuseppe's. Uh, a few lemons in the crab spaghetti. This beat. I was like, Jamal better fucking kill this beat, right? And you killed it. And you killed it. Yeah. So y'all can share the motherfucking beat. Both of them joints is crazy. <laughs> Talk to me about the jacket in the threat video. Oh, that Pelly Pelly? Mm. That's a nice, that's a nice Pelly Pelly. I had Wait, copped. that embossed ass. <laughs> yeah, I had copped that joint last year. I um I had that for good brother too, the video I did with Keystar. I caught the Pelly Pelly for my birthday. So I wanted to get something fly, and I said, you know, I'm just bring this joint out, man. This jacket is just so fire. Like I get mad compliments when I pull it out. It, it looked like it cost yeah. more than my car. It really does. The Mark Buchanan joint, you know. Bro, listen. What's what's that? A three X? Nah, nah, nah. It's a, it's a uh, you know I'm my size. You know? I'm sorry. I'm fat. I'm just I, okay. In that song, we talk about the threat. You have a bar about wanting to be a better father to your son. What does that mean? And do you feel that in some ways you were lacking? You know what? I'm glad you brought that to my attention because, you know, the reason behind that was just as far as like manhood. You know what I'm saying? I got kids at the end of the day. So, yeah, I might rap and, and, and be speaking to y'all. But, you know, I take away from my family sometimes when I'm trying to um, entertain and please the people. You know, my children isn't in that, that crowd or fan base. So I wanted to build a better relationship with my son over the years because I was so focused, tunnel vision at a point in my life in the street and then trying to get into music. It was like, I was so business minded where, you know, I had to start incorporating my son more into my life more, especially being my, my only son. Like I got two daughters too, but you know, as, as men, we got to connect a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? So like, he was doing karate. I was a part of that. You know, I take him swimming. I take him to the YMCA, go to the play center. We, we play the video game together. We play Minecraft. You know, we always kicking in and talk more. So it was like, I want to I want to live what I'm speaking. Um, do you believe in writing your lyrics out on paper? And, and do you actually memorize the rhymes or are you reading off the phone when you record? Um, it's a mix of both. I don't really do the paper thing no more. You know, I done lost so many papers and notebooks and stuff. And Jesse writing with a pen, you know, ain't nobody writing with pencils no more. It's 2022. Mm -hmm. But um, writing with, um, if it's a freestyle, I'll like, I'll, I'll write it down just so I can be able to remember it. But it, it definitely, the number is 17. Repeat something 17 times and you'll remember it. Gems. So that's been my, that's, yeah, that's been my, uh, my technique. You read, if you read your verse 17 times, Back to back, eventually you won't need the paper. You'll remember that verse. What has to be in the studio when you record? What's the vibe got to be like? The good, the right amount of people. Sometimes people be having the studio too booked, too many people in there. I don't like to be in there with a bunch of people. I like, you know what I mean? Two people in the spot, somebody that's helping work the board, somebody for feedback, that input. You know, I, 
I still I avoid yes men. I keep all solid men around me. You know what I mean, real genuine homies that's gonna let me know if I'm on point or if I'm lacking in any area. You know what I'm saying? So that's a gym, and that also <clears throat> answers part of the question of how is Jamal Gasol so damn good, right? Because well, I, you, you go, you take out the garbage. You got your people that is keeping it a hundred with you. You know what I mean? That's what you need. Mm -hmm. You do. You need them type of people. You need to. You need some real genuine people. I just told my homies in the group chat, like, yo, I appreciate y'all for, like, always keeping it real with me all these years, man, because that matters in this day and age. Like, people that let their homie just look sorry out here and, you know, not really tell them about itself. And also, though, being able to take constructive criticism matters, too, because in the beginning, I couldn't, I didn't like how people felt about my music. I thought I was hot. You know what I mean? People tell me, nah, you ain't all that, this, that, and the third. I felt like they was haters. But it was like, no, everybody's entitled to an opinion. So just having an understanding behind criticism plays a part too. Like, and it's just about it's about, it's the process of getting better. Like, I could tell you, listen, I listen to the novelty of standards, and however, you got bangers, <laughs> like <laughs> pow pow. Y'all got to listen to this fucking album. The man's not sitting here. It's not a favor. Nobody told me I had to listen. I listened to the album. Sitting there listening, y'all know what I do. I listen to fucking YouTube, right? And I'm there. And the artwork came up. And I oh, Jamal, right? Because cause we're going to get to this on the next question, too. Because it was right off of the heels of Oxtails. And I was like, I want to hear more, right? And I listened to Novelty. And I was pleasantly surprised by how fucking hard body it was. I'm talking about the all, the all the songs, all the verses, attention to detail on the verses, the music, the way you interact with the fucking music. It's not just a nigga getting a collection of beats, going in and saying some bullshit. It's, this is a man, novelty of standards I'm talking about, who crafted a, a specific project with authenticity and respect for the culture in mind. You're going to hear that when you listen to the fucking album. That's what I heard, right? That's why you're sitting right here right now. So oh, you well, did yeah. Oxtails with Deuce Ellis. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the conversation like that led to that project? Well, uh, we all we always talk about it, man. Um, Deuce had hit me up one day because we had spoke before or whatever. I talked to him in the inbox there, there coming to New York. We we're gonna go to a studio one time, but we didn't. But he hit me up one day, like, "Yo, man, I see they ain't really like giving you the credit you deserve, man. Like, I see you be working hard, man. I just wanna let you know I respect your hustle and I respect what you're doing, man." And I was telling him, like, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm going to keep working. They're going to they gonna eventually get on. And I had seen that he was, like, getting some good reviews from his project. So he had hit me, like, he hit me up to work on the tape. I checked out his beats, you know what I mean, and sound. It was definitely different, more like some Andre 3000, you know what I mean, mixed with, like, some Childish Gambino vibe. So I um was like, yeah, you know, it's something different. Let me try it. Let me just work with Deuce, you know what I mean? But and that's how, that's how we came to that. That's dope, uh, and it is. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a stretch for you a little bit. It takes you into an area maybe we haven't heard you in, like the song "Running," which I probably play on my show three or four times. And we lost Jamal Gasol. Wait, no, and he's back. Somebody called you. Yeah, somebody called me. I'm yeah, like, that's why I be telling people airplane <laughs> on. I didn't even know he was on the phone. That's all. What was the Nick? What's the Nicholas Craven joint that I just? Um, with, but the threat. The threat. I got. I copy and paste it, got my questions all over the fucking place. I'm unorganized today. This is my fault. You um, sound at home over that soulful production. Um, how did you and Craven connect? I um I reached out to Craven years ago, man. Me and Craven was supposed to do a project back in like 2018. Um, my homies I was working with at the time, we was gonna go half on a project with him, but we didn't. So I just kept in touch with him, always talking to him. And I had got a beat from him for the world is Piff too. He actually did my intro. So I was like, yo, I got a, yeah, his beats is crazy. I had another beat from Nicholas Craven too. I'm trying to remember what album was it on, but his production just so soulful. And like, I remember hearing that as a kid, like certain samples I remember hearing in my childhood on the radio, like out with my grandma, you know what I mean? The fishing type stuff you hear on the way out there type. Yeah. Um, I had heard the threat, the beat on, he showed me his link on SoundCloud, all his beats. I'm like, yo, this dude is, man, how much you want? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I understand business and I definitely see you got a resume, but we've been um, talking since then. And um, even he's surprised with like how the, like the feedback of the threat was like, okay, this joint is fire. Like, 
Go peep the threat, y'all. Go peep. And listen, when you get a craving beat, you got to be able to talk. This is not, this ain't for no little, Nicholas Craven don't make beats for little teeny bopper ass niggas. Like, you better have something to say because, like you said, that soul, but it lends itself to some weighty fucking discussion, some introspection, some real spit on that. Like, when, when you see Nicholas Craven and Ransom, you know they come in with something crazy. And yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure I, I'm gonna make sure I set the bar. You know what I'm saying? This producer already got a top tier artist on his joint. I don't want to come on there lacking nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, all right. Now I'm coming with that all in, full fledged. Like, who is this? You know what I'm saying? I respect that that you understand the significance. You don't just get a craving beat, or you don't just get a special beat and think I'm a nah. You like, yeah, I'm taking it up a notch, and that's exactly you did that across all the. You keep getting better and better and better. So thank you, and I say that to quite a few people, but I think that's so important um, to the movement. I see people get to a certain level and they get fucking stagnated, and I always want to see do you got more and. I'm not, well, Mussolini is one of these guys, you know what I mean, who I felt like over the last year, year and a half, he just upped his game. You were also one of those guys over the last year, year and a half. It's just everything is so fucking crispy. Like the darts is crazy. I'm talking too much. I see the word piff around you a lot. We all know what piff means, but explain what the how that word connects to your movement. Well, um, you know, my, my acronym for piff is passion, investments, feet, and families. You know what I'm saying? So if you um you passionate about what you're doing and investing into it, you know, that's the bread and butter of your household. So, you know, instead of just screaming about it just being weed, you know, everybody came around when it was weed. So if I come with that same message behind PIF and a different acronym, it is still influence and encourage others to want to be a part um, of it. Where should we as hip hop fans and black people land on? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I just wrote this question. I was going to take it out. I'm just looking at it like, yo. I'm like, why did I put this question in here? But that, was, that must have been what was on my mind when I was writing this shit. Where should we, where should we as hip-hop fans and black people land on Kanye? On Kanye West? Uh, on Kanye? Yeah. I, I, yo, you know what, man? I don't know, man. Everybody got mixed views on Ye. I personally like Kanye. I ain't going to lie. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna go, I'm born to Wyoming. You know what I mean? He, he sent me the call. I'm coming. Right. I mess with Kanye. I think he I think he speaks through his emotions though. Like he don't talk about what everybody else talks about on record. And that's what makes him dope. He knows how to make his life seem more interesting than what it actually is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean Kanye is great. It's very entertaining to while. Of course, I'm shout out to Carlos who just I uh, was talking about, I miss the old Kanye, he, uh, Classic Material New York, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Classic Material New York, he had the the, the promos for the for the fits, talk about, uh, I miss the old Kanye. And that's the thing, we miss the old Kanye. Kanye's a genius. Uh, he's done a couple of things that I find to be a bit troublesome. But I asked that question because it's like, what side do we fall on? And then it's like, Dude, what is this guy going to do like next tomorrow? And I can't go into all the things that I'm pissed off about Kanye West about, but clearly he's a musical genius. Um yeah. I put a whole I did put a whole list of shit in here. I'm not gonna go about that. Um you did it's a dirty game with Ito and you had V Don on the beat. Uh the Ooh. beginning is a clip from the HBO show The Wire with Marlo in prison saying I'm done with this gangster shit. I've been there, done that. Is that a description of your life right now? Yeah, that was that was the start. That was the start of it right there, like really trying to transition from the street into legitimacy, you know what I'm saying? That was the perfect time. I got raided the night I bought them beats from V-Don. So it was like, damn, before I ever do anything with this, with these songs, I ended up getting arrested and shit. And that was just a perfect concept. It was like, you know what? You gotta go all in with this rap shit, whether you gotta go do some time, or if you luck up, man, you ahead of the curve if you luck up, but yeah, you need to get with this rap shit. And that was my, that was a good clip, you know what I'm saying? I've been there, done that. Oh, a great clip uh, from from a, from a great show. Talk to me about the raid. What happened with the raid? You was you was you were sleeping. You was eating dinner. What happened? No, I was um I was getting my daughter ready for school. I had my daughter up. My son was in the room sleep. Um, I was in the bathroom brushing her teeth. I was talking to my my girl mom at the time, asking her if I could bring my son over there so I could be able to go. You know, what I mean, do my thing at the time. But she um didn't end up making it. I heard somebody. Open, trying to open my door, like the front door. I heard the doorknob wiggling. I went up to the doorknob, and as soon as I looked through the people, 
they got the little ram joint about to cop back and bust my door down. So I'm like, oh shit, I back up, they bust it open. My daughter runs screaming. I ran in the back. They like tackle me down, put the little plastic, um, little plastic cup joints around my wrist and shit, you know, ran through the crib. They had my they was like holding my son. They my um my girl's godfather lit upstairs. So he walked my daughter to the bus stop. But like he came back to get my son too. But you know, my kids had to witness all of that. So that that like really messed me up too. Like my daughter seeing me in handcuffs and pulling drugs out on the floor and you know what I'm saying? This that it was just it was an embarrassing moment for me. Yeah, I could I could only imagine. Um and throughout the process, the they take you down to booking or whatever, you don't get out that day. Right, because it takes a few days. You got to get on the phone with some people. They got to get together some money, a few thousand at least. I'm guessing, right? Um, did you ever, did you ever get out on bail, or did you had to do your whole case from there? No, nah, no, nah, I got out on bail. I'm not gonna lie, it was my, um, it was my first like real, real situation. Like I done had a couple felonies, fighting like assault, misdemeanors, and stuff like that. But it was like my first real deal joint. So I got bailed out the next day, though. My bail was ten thousand. But you know, with a bondsman, it was ten. So I, 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 they only caught me with a short at the crib. Luckily, like, you know what I mean. It could have been worse. A couple of days you, before that, it could have been worse. When you was when when you when they first booked you and you're not sitting in that jail cell, explain to me like the first few hours, what's going through your mind? <laughs> That's I remember that. I'm like, damn, I fucked up. I, I ain't want to let you know. I, I wasn't out there as like I know I'm selling was selling drugs. Like if if you know me. It wasn't like, oh, I know what he do. So the fact that that coming out and other people finding out, oh, wow, that's what he was doing or that's what he was doing, it was just like, dang, like my cover blown. Like, dang, I'm like going to jail after over all this shit. Like, damn, son, it was just like, I fucked up. You know, my, my kids had to see that. My grandma, my mom, you know, my dad. Like, my dad had a different relationship with me, understanding, like, he'd been through the situation before, but, like, you know, my mom and my grandma, you know, they like, I ain't raised you to be like that. You know, just that disappointment to them. It was just like, I know I messed up a lot of people's minds that have viewed me. Conway often talks about fake love in his music. Um, seriously, how much fake love is floating around this underground scene right now? You know <laughs> what, man? <laughs> you know what, man? I swear... I think it's just a perception thing. And then, like, the rap game is like wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Like, one minute y'all cool, one minute y'all not. Next minute, next thing you put in the ring with this person. That's the image I get from wrestling. I mean, with rap. Like, some people, I done met some genuine cats, though. Don't get me wrong. I got, yeah. like, a, I maybe could get up to two handful of genuine rappers I done met in this game that ain't funny money fronting. They keep it real with me, too. Like, you know what I mean? One of my good boys I mentioned, Sauce Heist. That's my dog right there. I could talk to that man about life. You know what I'm saying? We even got cool over the years from rap. And it's cool that we cool outside of rap. It ain't always music when we talk. You know what I'm saying? So that'd be my thing too. Like rap, like working with rappers and stuff who just want to work with you for music and stuff. It's like them opportunists. Don't think they're your friends. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget that. So you definitely um going to meet some funny money people. But to answer your question, it's a little bit of like, I feel like, 70 30 you know what i mean fake love in the game like 70 percent fake you know what i mean right what can we say fake love fake love i don't do the fake love talking down behind my back no homie that ain't love i'm just saying that's just a quote um have you ever had to step away from people in this game because of hate or bad business um yeah, I had to step away from some people from for bad business. Like we cool, but I just I just know my my um my place with you and what I'm willing to do now. Like if we was to ever like to work again or something, it had to be under my terms and negotiations. But you know, I mean, I um I haven't ran across. I I I can name one artist. I ain't gonna say his name. He had some issues going on in his personal life, which got into the rap scene, and I had asked him about it. And it's like, yo, I'm, I'm not even going to judge you on whatever you got going on. I just want to know so I know who I'm dealing with. And, you know, he got offended about it. And it was like, you know, those type of ways I even questioned him. But it's like, yo, my association, my reputation is on the line by associating with you. So I got to make sure I know what I'm dealing with when I'm promoting and working and working with people. Like, you know, like, so I definitely had to cut back from some people. I had some, one dude was a sex offender. Um, some whole other shit came out like later on, but it was like, yeah, I, I cut back from features 
for a while after that. Somebody we know you talk about when you say is a sex offender. I don't think y'all know this dude. I don't think he's he's like from LA. I don't think he's big. I don't want to put him on the front got street. Got you. Got you. Know you. What I mean? But he ain't, he ain't big. Okay. You seem comfortable on all types of beats um, that reflect the, the full scope of what I call uh, East Coast hip hop. Do you think you'll continue to dabble in all these areas or have you found a sound that fits you best going forward? You know what? I think I found my sound, man. I think I found my sound. You're going to hear much more of these similar beats and these projects I do like. I think I found my sound. Is I it more like it novelty of standards? I'm sorry for cutting you off. More like novelty of standards? Yeah, more of that old sample, like the standouts. You know what I mean? I mess with them. My Shout to standouts. Guys. Shout to the fucking standouts. Yeah, man. My nigga A dot, C dot. You know, they make that same sound. If you listen to the novelty of standard, they got a similar sample game too. But my boy Bass, my nigga Bass, man. Shout out to Bass Reeves. He's a diamond in the dirt, man. That's a hidden gem right there. Niggas. Niggas know about him too, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like the first one to do a project with him. So word up. Um, what what goals do you have for 2022? 2022, you know, I'm gonna just tell you the original plan before everything happened. Like my grandmother passed away, my little brother passed away. I wanted to take a break from rap. I wanted to just because I was dropping so much music, I felt at the time where I was like, yo, I wanted to drop more true stories and then just take some time off. But it's like, yo, I'm not in the position I really want to be in, and I got to keep working. So I, I want to just keep dropping, keep doing consistent music, you know what I mean? Keeping the quality consistent. I got more videos dropping. I'm about to finish the cook-up season three with the standouts. And um, I got a project with 38 Special dropping at the end of this year. Word. Oh, a whole project with 38 Special. Yeah, we got a it's, it's an EP right now, but I'm not gonna lie, it might turn to an album. Let's do the whole damn project. album, bro. Let's go, man. We gotta we got we gotta have it. I got a project with my boy, um, Vic Spencer coming out this year too. Yo, <laughs> project with him coming out. It's already done. Videos. We just we just you know what I mean. It's about time. Bro, thank you for fucking stopping by. Uh, my honor to interview you. I, I like to catch people when they own the way because your price going to change too. And before that happens, make sure you get in the mail a 3X, one of them fucking Mr. 31 or the, or the Piff hoodie. Put one in the mail for your boy. I'm going to wear it right here. You see? You know what I mean? But but a we 3X? definitely. Huh? A 3X? This is a 3. I think this is a 3X. I'm a fat guy, man. I eat a lot of filet of fish. <laughs> I, do. I got you, man. Trust me. We gonna, I'm going to get you a mailing address. I'm going to send you out some merch, man. Definitely, I appreciate that promo. Thank you, bro. And I will rock it proudly because it's like, you know, it's almost like I always say this to other people. It's like if if I could have been there at the fly on the wall right before, let's say, Run DMC took off or Snoop took off. So it's, it's a thrill to catch a, <coughs> excuse me, a guy like you who I know is going going places to have you bless this platform you know what i mean it's a, it's a big deal for me because one day i'm gonna be like yo but i interviewed that dude way back you know what i mean and i don't think it's gonna take too long but at least i got this in the archive so thank you for affording me this opportunity and thank you for what you do for hip-hop thank you man i appreciate the love man i thank you for having me on your, your platform too man i see you doing your thing man you both go right thank you